technology, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, so I am Sister Virginia, Franciscan and Elizabethan sisters. I'm living in a Rumoro community. Narumoro is, our community is five kilometers from Narumoro town, Irigidathi Parish. By profession, I'm a nurse, and I'm happy to be that. I'm also happy to be an Elizabethan sister, and uh, I appreciate to be here with you today. As we share, we shall get to know much more about the Franciscan Elizabethan sisters, where I come from. And by so doing, we shall even discover and see when we become aware of ourselves, where do we want to place ourselves even later in the future? We are young persons because it is, a, uh, it is a passage that we have to be there. After the passage of being as a youth, as a youth then we make decisions to, be, to choose the type of life that we want to be. We've had, you can choose a family life, we've had, you can choose a religious life, or you can choose even to be single. So it is after you make a decision that you fit in one of the categories. So I'm here to present on self-awareness and human emotions. Why do we want to become aware of who we are? Many times we are, but we've not understood what is it that we want, or who are we, how do we feel, how should we express our feelings and our emotions. Sometimes it is very difficult, and especially when we are a bit young. Within us and everybody, there is something that pushes us. A greater kindness, we would call it, some compassion, for ourselves. We want to laugh ourselves, there's a laugh within ourselves, and we also want to let go experiences that are in the past. We have to accept what we are, who we are, and we have to love even ourselves, because it's, it's difficult to love others if you've not loved yourself. So the first thing is that you should understand, why should I love myself as Virginia? Why should I love myself as the other person that you are there? Knowing or getting aware of ourselves then helps us also to let go our past. You might have felt rejected, you might have, you might have, felt, you, you might have experienced that there are so many things that have been denied you in life and we want to let go happily, joyfully, and we have to embrace our new reality. And this helps us also to grow in a relationship in our families, at school, among us, the youth group, and even in the church. Once we understand who we are, once we let go our painful past, and embrace the newness that comes along with life, then we grow very well in a relationship with others, in a relationship with God, and we are able to see our lives without shame, without blame, in a way that you pick yourself as an individual and you are able to let go, to say, ah, this is my past and I don't want my past to dictate my present life. But I want to embrace my past with joy and I want to move on. When we know others, we become very intelligent. The effort you make to know the other person helps us to become very intelligent. When we know ourselves, when you understand who you are, we are gaining true wisdom of our being. And you know, wisdom has a genesis. Because before creation, during creation, wisdom has existed. So you can imagine, knowing myself give, gives me a lot of wisdom that I'm able to discover even 
the power of God within myself, I'm able to discover even the power of God within other people. I'm able to, to describe what I feel, what I go through. All this comes about with self-awareness. When we master others, it is strength. When you get to know about the other person, you build up a strength within yourself. When you master yourself, then this is true power. That you know your limits, you know how far is far, how near is near. You, this gives you true power of who you are, of the person in you. Young as you are, it gives you a true power of who you are. And then I would wish to describe what is self-awareness. Uh, this is a state of consciousness whereby we focus on ourself, you know, that is on yourself, on your thoughts, on your feelings, on your emotions, on your beliefs, on your values, and on your well-being. So being self, becoming self-aware is a compact aspect of life. As young persons, we want to, to make a journey of becoming aware of the type of persons we are. Such that you would, you know, you would describe, you would say, this is me, this is what I think, these are my feelings. We say there are no good and bad feelings. You're able to say, this is what I believe. And you're able to say, I stand by this type of values. When we are at that level, we can comfortably say, we can comfortably feel that we are growing towards self-awareness. There are things that we cannot change. There are things that we can change. But it's difficult to change what we cannot see. When people have come to us, our parents, our teachers, our mentors, our patrons, our church leaders, the priests, the sisters, and they're telling us, we need to check on this and we need to change. Then it provokes a spirit of change within us. But un unless we know what we have to change, then we cannot change. We would only think that the, what I do, or oh, this value is the proper one, then it becomes difficult to, for us to change. When we are self-aware, then we are able to acknowledge our strength. We are able to acknowledge our weaknesses without feeling guilt, without feeling I'm limited, I'm incapacitated, but we are able to acknowledge even the beauty within us, the beauty that comes even with other people. We are able to acknowledge the strength in other people, and that is a way of appreciating the type of a person that I am or the person in you. And that is why, at the end of the day, you're able to make a decision and a sober decision that today, as Sister Virginia, I have made a choice to follow Christ. Where? In the Elizabethan family because I felt that this was the proper way that I was supposed to follow. An informed decision taking time, reflecting, weighing the advantages, the disadvantages, and then saying, yes, I accept to follow Christ as a consecrated woman. Following Christ, you know, is the only person that I want to follow, and in a particular family. You also understand when we get married, we get married to particular families. We don't get married everywhere, is it? Yeah, so we get married to a particular family, we also get consecrated to a particular religious uh, institution. Brothers just said he's, from the, he's, from, he's a Carmelite, from the Carmelite order. I am from a fr Franciscan order, Franciscan Elizabethan congregation. And that gives us identity when we have only understood who we are. In self-awareness, there are five things that we can't omit. How many senses do we have? Huh? Five. Yes. So in self-awareness, 
the five senses comes into action. The sense of sight, what we see. Before we see others, we are supposed to see what is within us. There are a lot of good things within us that we are supposed to see. There is a lot of beauty outside that we are supposed to see. The sense of hearing influences our self-awareness. What we hear from the media, from the churches, from our families, we hear a lot of things, is it? So what we hear has a very great impact on our being self-aware. What we test, what we test, we can say, test is a sense of test. We only test through the, the, the tongue. Food, everything, what we test. There are also drugs, is it? There are many things that we can test and can have impact in our lives. And if we are not aware of what we have to test, then it has a great influence over our physical body. Biological body would be influenced by what we take in. Remember, what we take in may not be bad, but what comes out might also be bad. Sometimes what we take in also is also bad, and it leads to even damage our way of thinking, our way of reasoning, our way of interacting, and then it becomes harmful. What we touch, the sense of touch. There are many things. I liked when we were told, pick your phone and put it in a silent mode. If you literally don't do that, then you don't concentrate. There are many things that you would touch and would have an impact. What we smell. Why are we, all of us, in masks? So some I can see, I don't know where the masks have gone. Why are we in masks? Because we are trying to protect ourselves from a virus that we don't that has become a very great challenge to the whole world. COVID-19 has changed our way of living, has changed our, our way of interacting. Even our being self-aware, it has affected everything. But it gives us a new awareness that we can even keep social distance. We cannot even, and shaking has been prohibited. We cannot hug, we cannot do many things. Why? Because a virus, a small virus has run around the world and that is why also the social life has changed. The sense of smell. So we have to cover ourselves that whatever I, I spit, whatever I breathe doesn't, is not breathed out in by the other person. So, consciously knowing what we feel, what we think, or what we sense is just being, is just getting to deeper of knowing ourselves. Becoming aware of ourselves has several aspects. So, there are four aspects that we have to get into uh, knowledge about them. One, our body. And this body is the biological body. Biological body means from head to toe. That's our biological body. If, you know, I say, and because I, I love nursing, I love medicine, we say if you don't know what you are, it becomes difficult even to know the other person. So if you are seated there and you don't know what lies from the head to the toe, then I think I would ask you, you see me, I help you to know what from your head to the toe so that we help one another understand what is there knowing oneself gives one confidence such that you are walking you are standing you are sitting describes that yes i am because i appreciate what i carry within myself and that becomes the very first and essential aspect of self-awareness Imagine, Virginia can sit, Virginia can stand, comfortably accepting and appreciating this is her. This is Virginia, beautifully, wonderfully made in God's image and likeness. That is when we start saying, yes, I am aware of myself. If you feel that I'm too short and I still lament, I still complain, there's a problem. 
if you feel you are too tall and you are not supposed to be that height and you are still lamenting, then we need to help one another to accept and appreciate what God has put in us. You feel that you are darker, you are lighter, you are what? And you still are not comfortable then, it is time that we need to make peace with that beauty that God has put in you. Everybody beautiful, created in the image of God. And that becomes a very essential thing. Our biological aspect, our body that we carry, these bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we are only taking what God has given us and we are appreciating what God has put within us. I look at you and I say, wonderful, beautifully created in the image and likeness of God. I look at him and I say, wonderful, beautifully made in the likeness and image of God because we are all beautiful and some wonderfully made in the image and likeness of God. And we should not feel lesser that I don't, I, um, I lack this, that is why I feel lesser or that is why I, you know, I'm not comfortable with myself because I'm, I'm light-skinned, I'm chocolate, I'm this, I'm, you know, this type, you know, this is the beauty that God has given us. The other part is the part of the emotions. And we call this the affective me. The affective me means the energy within me. The energy within me helps me to reach the other person. And that is why we have the capacity to love. If you don't love, you are not able to move. If I didn't love joining a congregation, I didn't love following Christ, then it would be difficult. I wouldn't be here as a, as a sister. If our parents, because here we don't have parents, if our parents didn't love each other, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. No, because there was not that affective move. And every one of us, it is part of us, and it is within us. God loved before. So that's why us, as human persons, there's that affective aspect in us that we are supposed to love. I am drawn to her by the aspect of love. I'll be drawn to him because there's something within that pushes me to love. And this is also part of what God has also put in us. We love, but we know love, how far is this love? And what type of a love do I want also to extend to the other person? The other part is the spiritual me or the soul. How, when we understand how to take care of the soul or the spiritual me, then we are able to appreciate. I admire that we are here because, one, we are called by baptism and we are Christians, Catholics here. I would want to believe everybody is baptized. And we are here because an invitation, you made an invitation, you felt we needed to listen to something, we felt that we needed to share with somebody, and that's why we are here. We come to church, we pray, the connectedness between us and the God, that becomes the spiritual me. We take care of the soul because once we are gone, so many people have gone with COVID, once we are gone, what happens? God meets us because of the soul. The soul get, goes back to the creator. This, this flesh, this one, will go back. We shall go back six feet down, but the soul goes back to the creator. And that is why, as we take care of the physical body, we are supposed to take care of the spiritual body. Everybody in the morning took a shower, is it? And if you didn't take a shower, you would be feeling uncomfortable. You would be saying, ah, me, I don't feel comfortable to be amid these people. But because we thought that, ah, for me to be presentable, for me to go there, I take a shower, that is the biological body. You made the biological body comfortable. Then somebody woke up and said a prayer. You said, before I come out, then what am I supposed to do? I nourish my spiritual body because I want to be connected with God. I know today I'm supposed to go for a youth seminar and then God guide me, help me, protect me, be with me. That was part of the spiritual care that you were taking. You came, you met your friend, that becomes part of the affective me 
that they affect you that you want to share with the other person. The other part is the mind, intellectual me. So, we use a lot of our brains thinking, calculating, you know, making plans, making, you know, so many things that we have to, to compact together in our little brains and closed in this, uh, in the head. We, we have to plan, we have to think, we have to make decisions. All of it has to come from within. And that is why we, we call it the intellectual me. Now, when we take action, it is because of something that is pushing us to do so. When we become aware of the present, of the moment, then we are very at home with ourselves. You feel at home because, you know, you made a decision to come and be here with, the, you, with the, this group and you are very comfortable. And I see most of you are very comfortable because you are prepared that you are coming for a talk by so and so. Maybe you didn't know that sister was accompanying the group, but I'm happy that I that I'm with you, then you start getting at home. You feel comfortable. When I present, I am present to myself. When you are present to yourself, then you are able to be present to the other person. If you are not at home, you will not give space to the other person to be at home. So these two has to go hand in hand. So when I'm fully aware of myself, then I'm able to accommodate the other person. But we say self-awareness is a process. Today, we are, we are just checking how to become aware of ourselves as young people. But then it doesn't end from this presentation. Tomorrow, the day after, you still have to learn every day and falls with something different, something new. And in that newness, you are supposed to make yourself feel comfortable, make yourself feel at home. You can be at home, but not at home. You can be in the church, but not in the church. And that is why we have to learn to get ourselves, you know, being comfortable, being at home with whatever comes at hand. And then I'm asking myself, we're asking ourselves, why should we, why self-awareness? Why should I know myself as Sister Virginia? Why? Does it have any help? Why should you know yourself as a young person? Does it have any benefit? Many people have understood and many writers have put it across that self-awareness is a lifelong journey. A lifelong journey. So, it is a continuity. Not that you've not known yourself. You've known yourself to the far maybe you, you were before we started. At the end of this session, you will have added some knowledge, something new about knowing oneself. Some say many lives journey. To mean that it is a very, very long journey now, until we are separated, you know, we are only separated by death. So when we are separated, then it is where self-awareness ends. We become, you know, like the master of our lives. And each new level of awareness brings something new in life. And we still choose to master what new comes in our life. In this journey, it becomes the greatest thing that would make because when we understand ourselves, we make a journey that really gives us a lot of peace, gives us a lot of joy, and then we are comfortable with ourselves. There are things that affect our self-awareness. Becoming self-aware is power. We've said it is power within you when you are aware of yourself. But there are things that would affect us. And this, we, can, we talk them of our origins. Everybody's from a family, is it? All of us are from families. In respect of the type of family that we come from. In our families, we have our brothers, our sisters, our parents, our relatives. 
Those things affect our self-awareness. In school, we've interacted with the people of different, uh, you know, different characters. And they are, they are like that because they come from their particular families, from a particular background. The moment we understand that, we understand and appreciate our families, then we are able to move. I can be from a single parent family. You can be from a, a family that has both parents. You can be from a family, an orphan family. And these are families. And we appreciate God because they are families. So once we know the type of families we've come from, we begin a journey towards self-awareness. We begin a journey that helps us to appreciate. We can be, be coming from parent, uh, families, maybe we don't choose where we are born, is it? So it would be unfortunate that I come from a family that my, my father has been a drunkard. I may not be in a position to change my father who is a drunkard. Still, I may not be able to change my mother. But I can learn to appreciate my mother. I can learn to appreciate my dad. I can learn to appreciate even my single mother who brought me up. When I'm open enough to go to make a journey through self-awareness. Sometimes it would be difficult. Sometimes it is also helpful as we grow up. Something else that would affect us is time, date of birth, uh, it would affect us because we'd say I was born in this time, it was not the proper time. Place, village, school, community, and church. Our Lady of Divine Providence. I love that. I love that attribute of our Mother Mary, Our Lady of Divine Providence. You know, uh, the congregation, my congregation, Elizabethan sisters, Franciscan Elizabethan sisters, our foundress, Elizabeth Fedramini, believed in divine providence. So, whenever we are talking about Our Lady of Divine Providence, it is reminding me that I'm also associated with a foundress, with a woman who trusted in the providence of God. I've joined a family that believes and trusts in a divine providence. I'm happy that I'm speaking with young people who are coming from a community that speaks of Our Lady of Divine Providence. To trust in divine providence calls a lot of faith, a lot of faith. If today you would say, I trust, whatever God provides is that what I live for or by. Your faith is, your faith is, is very much far ahead. To, def, to trust in divine providence is not very easy. It is not very simple. But we dare risk and trust in divine providence because we are children of God. Bless village, school, community, and church. Sometimes our villages have been associated with different things. Our communities, our schools, our churches. And we might feel uncomfortable to be associated with that particular place. I believe we are happy to belong to this local church, Our Lady of Divine Providence. I also believe we are happy to belong to that village. I have not known the village around here. But I believe we are happy to belong to that village. It doesn't... It doesn't matter the people who made that village be empty. So what matters is me as Virginia, you as an individual, how have I understood? How much aware am I about this, what is happening in this village? And how much do I also want to overcome and grow? Our friends, both at school and at home, would also affect our self-awareness. We say, show me your friend. I tell, I tell you who you are because our friends have a very great 
impact on our self-awareness, school and home. Again, we can feel that I have not come from the best home because who comes from a better home from the other one? Maybe if I tell you, come and belong to my home, you will say, ah, sister, I thought, but it is not here where I belong. Hmm? Who, who feels comfortable at the neighbor's home? Anybody? I don't think that would feel comfortable at somebody else's home. But where we have come from, they become our places where we still move and build our esteem and build, become aware and appreciate our hobbies. What we like also as an influence in our self, in our, in our way of being. What are our values? Family values, individual values, and even the society. So, my values, your values, will determine how much aware you are about yourself. Will determine the type of a person that you are. And also your values would make us also describe the type of a person you are. And then we would wish to ask this question. How is my family? How is time, date, and the place of birth? How is my place, my village, my school, my friends, my hobbies, my values influencing my life today? How do those, these things affect my life today as a young person? Positively, it would be. Negatively, it would be. Because when, for example, we are not appreciating the families we come from, already we start getting a negative impact. When we are not comfortable with the villages that we come from, with our brothers, our sisters, our schools, then we are already putting down our self-esteem. So this would be the question that we ask ourselves. How does my family, my brothers, my sisters, the school have been, the school will still report next month, how is it influencing? How are my values, the church values, the community values, how are they affecting me, positively or negatively? Are they adding any value in my life? Are they influencing me positively? Those are things that we put across. And then I would want to check on steps to self-awareness. Steps to self-awareness. Uh, I always have found self-awareness been very interesting as I've grown up. Maybe when I was young, like you were seated there, I didn't understand what it meant. And maybe, yes, people did different presentations, but uh, sometimes it is difficult to understand when we have presenters. But as I've grown, I've come to appreciate being aware of who I am appreciating the type of a person I am. It is a very long journey. I have not yet understood whom I am. Every day I discover something new about myself. And this is the invitation that I would give you, that I would invite you, welcome every one of you. The first thing is we are asking ourselves on self-observation and analysis. Self-observation and analysis. And we'd ask ourselves, is the real you different than the identity that shows up in the world? Virginia or you and the world. How, 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 do, how, does, how do these two persons relate? The real me does it show does the real you is the real you different? than the identity that shows up in the world. So what is my identity? Are you really passionate about your work, about your life, about your studies, about your relationships? So, like who am I in the context of the world? Who am I in the context of my studies? Who am I, you know, at my work? Work does not mean that we have to be professional people outside there. We, we are all our workers. 
because I believe when we are at home, there are so many things that we put together and we want to bring something good. It is only when we ask ourselves, our relationship within us and the world, within us and the other persons, it is when we are able to say that really we are getting to understand who we are. And that's why we are saying this is self-observation. You take yourself as a person, you take your time, and evaluate yourself, your relationship, like that. Then we're asking ourselves, we are saying, how can your friends, how can the family, how can the community understand your motives and ideas if you don't understand them? You know, sometimes we say, uh, because, you know, when we are young, we are young, and it is beautiful to be young. We, we say, ah, mom, does not, mom is not understanding me. She doesn't understand what I'm going through. She, does, she doesn't understand what I feel. Dad cannot understand. They are not reasoning with me. I wish they would understand me. Imagine, if you don't understand yourself, who will understand? If I don't understand myself, who will understand me? It becomes very, I would say, confusing, very challenging, and that is why we need to understand. So that even the people we live with, our teachers are able to describe and say, yes, we understand Virginia, we understand this person because they've also understood themselves. So look, the society around us can only understand us when we understand ourselves. So when we say the church, our patrons, our parents, they are not understanding, they don't know what we are going through. But have we also shared what we are going through? For example, we are very quiet, we are very silent. Uh, you know, not unless somebody says what is happening. Do you know, I can't know, is it? Not unless you speak, I can't know. Me, I will speak many things because I'm doing a presentation, yes. But if I also don't speak, you will also not understand what his sister is telling us. So until we understand ourselves, it's when the other person can understand. And that's why we spoke about the soul, the body, the mind, and what? Eh? Those aspects, we put them together so that we are able to understand, make a journey towards understanding ourselves, accepting ourselves. The other thing is understanding the ego. Understanding that uh, the deep consciousness within us where our freedom starts. And this is, this is a, 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 an inner component that is responsible for our every conscious word, thought and action. So when we think, when we act Whatever comes out, this will determine our self-awareness. So when we understand all this, and again it takes us back to the connection of soul, body, and mind, then we are saying we are aware, we are becoming aware of ourselves. The ego, that, uh, that energy, that power within us, convinces us to adopt false ideas, fears, worries, conflict. But we are able to choose what is good. We don't have to be afraid as young people. Some people are now. The world is a bit strange. The world is, globalization is affecting all of us, young and old. So, at this stage, sometimes we are wondering, which way do we follow, you know? And then we are not very sure even what we are doing, is it correct? Are the people really understanding us what we are doing or what is happening? But the moment we understand what the word brings across, then we are able to make a step ahead. So the fears, the worries, the conflicts within us, they are things that we have to shed them off. But we can only do that with help, with assistance. This would help us, this would change us. The other thing that we want to say is about diversity. Embracing others. Diversity is something that is very, I would say, it's something very challenging and especially in our country. Embracing others. How much 
am I able to accept the other person? They are not my sister, they are not my brother, they are not my auntie, they are not my relative. How much am I able to accept and appreciate the other person from the other side of the country? I admire what happens in the schools, in the universities and like that. And even in our little environments, there's a lot of interaction. And so you find that we have integrated and this is a very great value. Such that I'm here at Nanyuki. Nanyuki is a bit mixed up. I want to believe, is it? There are so many types of people in Nanyuki. And this is very enriching. This is very encouraging because I get to understand that I can interact with different cultures. I can, in, I can embrace people from different tribes. I can work. I can socialize. We've intermarried from different cultures, from different tribes, and this is very rich. This, this makes us move, make an extra move, and even express God's love to other people. The diversity of the one's other person is not supposed to be a threatening thing. You are different. You are different from me. I come from the other part of the world, the other part of the country. I come from Eastern. We are in Central. So, being from the other side and coming to this side, it should not maybe feel people threatened, should not make people feel uncomfortable. I also believe our brothers also come from other different places. And then the world is very small. We are here to share. We are here to help one another grow because we are moved by love. And love is, you know, love is so strong such that we say faith can move mountains, but I think love can also do the same. Because it is love that brings us together and we want to make a journey. We want also the, you young people be able to come out and you know, shine out there in the future and say, yes, I remember this because I had it. I'm what I am because somebody helped me to make a decision. Somebody helped me to become aware of the person I am. Now, because we don't, maybe the time is a bit limited, but... I, I wished we would, we would have had an opportunity that would have made some drawing. I loved geography in high school. And geography because there was so much drawing, and I love drawing. Only I'm not able maybe to make, I'm not a very good artist, but I love drawing. When we go back, I put a challenge. When we go back, just go get a plain paper and at your comfort. At your free time, draw an image of yourself. What is your name? Dorothy. Ruth. Yes, there is Ruth. I don't know, you know, me, I didn't know anybody else. I know Ruth and uh, Jessica. You see, get just enough, a bit of time, a plain paper, and draw yourself. A very beautiful experience. How many by there have ever tried? Have you ever tried to draw yourself? Huh? Anybody, have you, have, you, have you ever thought that you can sit? I sit down and I draw Virginia. I start from, I know, I know how, I look my, how I look from the mirror. The others is what you tell me. You look like this. So, but so beautiful, sitting down in quietness, in silence, and put an image of yourself. Ruth, it would be very amazing. You will draw the, you, the Ruth. And if you would give somebody to interpret that, they will tell you who is this. But very, very beautiful experience. Get your time. Make it a fun. It is, it, is, it is also very, very nice. Put down your feelings, your emotions, what you think in that image that you've drawn. And then you'll be, stay two days, pick the same thing, and just see whether the same things are the same. The day you drew, the day you wrote your emotions, your feelings, and after two days, pick the same thing and just watch and, you know, you will have a, a very particular experience that really, like, reawakens you. It might make you, it might provoke you to do it many other times. Then, I want to ask ourselves, who am I? 
still in the diversity and you know who am I? Who are you? Hmm? <laughs> yes, it's a difficult question. Many times we are not able to answer who am I? You can only be able to say who you are when you are aware of yourself. Relationship with yourself begins with self-awareness. Relationship with yourself begins with self-awareness. From self-awareness, you can move to accepting yourself. By the way, we grow even to old age without accepting ourselves. You know, we are limited by so many little things. And that is why I still quote Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. If you learn what Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, let me just read it for you. Uh, God said, let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves, and let them be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, the cattle, all the wild animals, and all the creatures that creep along the ground. Verse 27. God created man in the image of himself. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Ruth and the others who are here. God created man in the image of himself. In the image of God, he created him. So you can imagine, seated where you are seated, coming from where you are coming from. God created us in his own image and in his own likeness. And that's why we are very different, because God is very unique. Virginia doesn't look like any of you, is it? Yes. And we are very unique, beautifully and some wonderfully meant in the image of God. This is one thing that I, I, I usually like to repeat to us, the young people. Many people have not appreciated themselves. Many people have disliked, you know, little things. Huh? You've seen people have gone out to bleach themselves, is it? People have gone out to take pills that they can change even their, 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 their sex to become something, somebody different. Not appreciating being a woman, but I want to become a man. A man not appreciating being a, a man, but they want to become a woman. You've seen... The world we are in has done crazy things to change, people to change what they are. And that is a clear indication that we are very far, some people are very far from understanding who they are, from appreciating the beauty that God has put across. We are special, unique, and precious. Isaiah 43, verse 4. These things you can read uh, when, you are, when you are back. I am wonderfully beautifully made. Brother started with Psalm 139, and the same still I would repeat. The Psalm 139, all of it, shows us how wonderful we are before God, and how God has known us from the time we were conceived in our mother's womb until now and even up to the end. He loves us from the very beginning. I have loved you with an everlasting love. He told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, three, that, Jeremiah that one, three. So, this describes the persons we are. And by so, we are able to appreciate and we are able to move ahead. What can block us from being, from our self-awareness? What would like put a, a dark curtain in your eyes and you are not aware of yourself? You are not accepting yourself. There are several things that can do so. One, the interior noise. Every one of us here, we have noises within us. There are noises, a lot of them, in our hearts, in our minds, and in the world. This can make us not understand who we are. The other thing is denial. We close our minds to the reality. We don't want to face, example, anger. 
when we don't want to really face different realities, then we block that aspect of becoming aware. When we repress, that is, when we push things, when we hide things in the unconscious, in our mind, what is painful? And that is why many times we're encouraging even the young people to do what? Come out and talk. I, I believe we shall give you our phone numbers. Call and say, sister, help me. Call and say, father, Call and say, brother, help me discover this. I'm struggling. And that is where we have people who are there as mentors to help us. Sometimes we encourage, we can talk to our parents, but sometimes we are not very free. Distractions. There are things that distract us. Nowadays we have the, the phone. We have spoken of globalization. What is happening? We are so much in our phones, we even are not listening to ourselves. That becomes also part of noise. We are so much in the internet, in everything, so we even can't concentrate, be it school, be it what. So that becoming self-aware is carried out by things that are around us. Avoid us. We can't face the reality. We want to avoid this looks not okay, this looks like that. So we want to avoid everything. We want to escape, we want to run. Then low self-esteem. When we have not appreciated ourselves again, what is happening? We become so, so down. We feel, I can't make it. And then we start another way of life that becomes, I can't, I don't want, I can't, you know, those type of things. But when we have built our self-esteem, and how do we build it? Like now what we are doing. Helping one another to become, of, to become self-aware of who we are. And by so doing, you are making a journey. You are building up your self-esteem, speaking out. This is what I feel. This is what I think. That builds up who the person in you. What are the goals of self-awareness? We want to achieve something when we are doing about self-awareness. You know, when you've understood yourself, yes, you've accepted who you are, what am I aiming at in the long run? Being self-aware helps in healing and the growth, that is, wholeness. Why? Because we've said we come from families and we know the families that we come from. When we've accepted, appreciated, and seen, even loved those families that we come from, it becomes a process of healing. You are able to get to be at peace with yourself. You are able to get at peace even with your family. We are able to get at peace with your brothers and sisters. Maybe this brother, this sister who maybe has entered into addiction and you are not able to cope up. Then you say, ah, I've understood. I've accepted. And then you are making a step forward and you are saying, mom, dad, how can we go about it? How do we help him? You know, that type of a thing. You are making a step. And that heals fast. You, are be you become the first beneficiary because you are the very first person to experience that. I can speak, so I'm experiencing a healing power within. I even am growing towards, you know, a responsibility. Then, what else do we want to get when we are aware of ourselves? We want to achieve self-acceptance. We said self-acceptance becomes the beginning of, it starts with self-awareness. So, when you've accepted the self in you, then you are starting a journey of growth towards a self-awareness. Then, again, we want to come home to self. You remember I said about sometimes we are not at home with ourselves. So we want to come home to ourselves, that is, being in touch with our truest self, such that you can stand here and you say, this is what I feel, and, and that becomes you. I can't say what I'm not feeling, otherwise it doesn't help, it doesn't work. Then, again, we want to produce fruits of change according to our deepest and the truest nature. Imagine if we would appreciate our being self-aware, and then we are looking at uh, becoming productive now and in the future because we are only sincere to ourselves. 
you know, we say, there is this saying that is only saying, you know, we can cheat others a lot, but you know you cannot cheat yourself, is it? You can do so many things, so many, but deep within that conscious within us, then it will still keep asking you, Ruth, is this what was supposed to be done? Like in you have presented to us something different. So these are the things that we want to achieve. Then we say, awareness is the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Remember, it is not our effort. The, the Holy Spirit, we, we describe the Holy Spirit as the counselor. The Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will make you aware of all these things. This is in John 14, 16. So, now, we spoke about the spiritual me. So the spiritual me, you see how it will help us understand who we are. So until we are welcoming the Holy Spirit, because we are Christians, baptized, so the Spirit is in us, then we are able to grow towards awareness. As I wind up, I, I would wish to share what happens when we become self-aware. What will happen? Now that we are seated here, we shall be going back. When you start the journey of self-awareness, there are things that will change in your life. And they will change, one, for your good, for your benefit, and then also for the others because we are living with the people in the community, in the society. So, among the benefits that we receive when we become self-aware, one, we are very much satisfied with ourselves. That is why we spoke of the biological me, the spiritual me, the intellectual me. You'll be very comfortable with that me. Be it biological, you will, you will stand, you will sit and say, yes, this is me. I'm proud of what I am. I'm proud of what I look. I'm proud of what the contents that are in me, I would say so. And then you'll be able to strongly acknowledge this is the intelligent me. This is the affectionate me. And then there you are able to move and move and grow. You'll be able to appreciate, you'll be able to be satisfied with your academics, your education. I know we are, some are in high school, maybe others are finishing. You'll be able really to feel good. I'm a student at this time, it feels war. You'll be able to say, yes, I'm at my work. It feels so amazing. And this becomes, you know, like the fruits. This is what will describe and say, ah, she looks so comfortable with her life. And everybody will admire and be asking, how, how do you make it, you know, to be, you always look amazing. What happens? This is what we want to reflect when we are aware of ourselves. Then we are able, we are being able to better manage our emotions. Emotions. We say emotions are not good and are not bad. But we only are able to, 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 to manage our emotions when we are aware. It's when you are able to say, yes, I feel angry because of one, two, three. But I make a decision. Does it have to influence, uh, you know, my, 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 my response maybe to other issues? We'll be able even to give uh, names to your emotions, to your feelings, because you're already aware of what you are going through. By the way, do you know we don't like saying, uh, we don't like, 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 they will see us pass, huh? like lightning from one corridor to another, from one room to another. Maybe, you know, and somebody's wondering, but what happened that she's behaving like this? Umefanyiwa nini, you know? Ruth, mama takuta Ruth, what is happening? What has happened that now you are not talking even to anybody, you know? Because when we are aware, you will be comfortable saying me, I've, I've, I'm angered by what has happened. I feel this is my feeling. We, are not, we don't question you about this you are feeling, but we'll help you, you know, come out of that. Then we, be, we get better leadership skills. All of us are leaders. I know we have prefects in schools, we have, 
even you know we have leaders here the secretary the chair lady like that not only those are leaders but everybody has a capacity of being a leader so we become better leaders when we are aware of ourselves then we improve our relationships you are able to relate more when you are aware of yourself but you become limited when you are not even aware of if i don't know who i am to keep boundaries becomes a problem to approach the other person becomes a problem so at the end of the day they should, the area of relationship becomes compromised when we are aware of ourselves our levels of happiness increases because when you are aware of yourself it builds up you've seen it builds up our self esteem so you know you are that lovely person that everybody wants to be associated with you are that happy person that everybody feels comfortable to be around and this is how we are telling the other person you know i'm at home with myself with the person i am you know like that we become more creative you know how many like drawing i don't know because i like drawing how many like drawing here at least i have somebody who likes drawing when you are drawing you can also make different patterns that you can display in your room in your house you know you can come out in the kitchen garden and do something great because you know you are at home with yourself so the ability to become creative doing things indoor and outdoor becomes you know it becomes very real very life in you better communication when you are aware of the person you are you are able to communicate we don't keep quiet we are able to say we are able to express ourselves the thing is that we become better in decision making soon or later you have to make serious decisions in life being young being a youth is a passage is a transition so you finished form 4 you still have to make a decision do i become a nurse like sister virginia i don't know how many like how many would want to become nurse in me i would also become a nurse a second time you do want to become a teacher i can see somebody smiling so i think there's somebody who really feels good to become a nurse do you want to become a social worker do you want to become an engineer you want to become a sister also by the way the careers don't bar us from becoming uh what we what we want to be you are a nurse you are married you are a nurse you are a sister you are a nurse you are a priest you are a doctor whichever it still puts you in the in the type of life that you want to be self awareness makes us confidence you become more confident when you are aware of yourself because comfortably i would stand confidently i would stand and express what i what I, what i what I, what i felt it is good to express i would talk what i feel is good to talk then people who are self aware they are likely to make better choices so imagine you've done your form 4 and you are there in between when you are aware of your capacities capabilities abilities you will be able to make a better choice of what you want to take even after then you have better listening skills you can listen to people you know many times we are tempted to talk more but we don't listen because we are even not aware that the other person has something to tell us so we become we develop better listening skills then we have increased ability to change habits everybody as a particular habit but when we are aware i know i can change from this a to b from this type of a thing to the other type of a thing and this makes us feel at home we are underlining feeling at home with yourself feeling at home with myself only when i have accepted myself only when i'm aware of the type of a person that i am our weaknesses our strengths our visions our aspirations all are a part of our being self aware so now as i close i really would welcome every person 
you today you will listen to many things but i don't know how much is going to remain but at the end of the day you are going to you know do an evaluation writing we call it like journaling when you when you do your journals you are able to know where you are who you are and the type of a person you you even want to be but if we just keep like for example what we have listened to imesha it is done and then you move on then it may not be of much benefit but one thing that would also help you make become aware of yourself is develop an habit of writing you put down even your feelings nilikuwa nimekasirika unaandika this is what i feel towards the other person i feel even uh, i feel an affection towards one so put it down it helps you become aware and you can revise it after some time and it will help you also become a better person and now uh when 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 uh, when i understood what i want to be we said when we make decisions is part of becoming self aware and that is why i chose to become a sister i didn't choose to become a brother because i'm not a, i'm not of the other side eh? but here i can see we are mixed up is it so in your decision making we make decision towards a particular way of life that you want to live you feel that would become a good parent would still encourage because all vocations are coming from the type from the parents from homes where we are born so we still are making invitation that sisters atujakuwa wengi sana such that we are now we, we say now it is enough the doors are still open so in the decisions that you make also help ask god to guide you to open a way for you to where you want to to follow when we do our careers you've made a decision you want to become this it doesn't bar or close you from choosing the type of life you want for us the elizabethan sisters we say we are we are strong women and it is true we are we are working towards reaching people and especially the poor they need in the society the poor doesn't mean is that person who doesn't have everybody has their type of poverty in heart that us or is crying for a need from the other person we witness the joyful and merciful love of god the father in whatever we do we have said we are in different fields and this helps us also reach the people those people that we are targeting we share the mercy of god what literally i've done is sharing the mercy of god because we've seen self awareness started from god and it is still again will end there so every activity that we want to do we want to win at least one soul one soul for god and god does not judge does not look at at your at your sins and they say no this one no our god is so merciful that he wants us to reach them so i still would wish to invite every one of you to reflect to think as young persons where you want to be in the future you finish your form 4 where do you want to be as we are in education we are in social ministry we have sisters who are teachers we are in social ministry we are in healthcare we are in pastoral care we are in formation administration and we care for the physically challenged i mean even inviting you we have the home of the physically challenged here where i stay in the community feel welcome the narumoro disabled children's home we heard about it is it yes so i would also wish to invite you come and see come and interact with us and see the activities that we do when you come in the health facility you'll meet you'll meet me there because i'm here and then we'll even interact more you want to choose your career you want to choose uh, what you want to be able to make decisions 
I will leave my number here. I will leave you in some of the papers that we have. Call, and then we'll be able to share more. Feel, you know, feel at home with us. Don't fear to approach the sister. Don't fear to, don't fear to approach the priest. Come, let us talk. Come, let us share. Come and even see what we are doing. I believe the Father's place is not far at the Camel there, at the Camelite down there. It's not far. Make a call. Reach them and see what they are doing. Make a call. Come and see what we are doing. And now, if you feel that you would also come and live our life, remember we have to follow Christ closely because to become a sister, to become a priest, following Christ, there is no option B. You have to be committed to follow Christ. You have to have the ability to live a community life. You know, we live in communities. I don't live alone, by the way. In our community, we are three sisters. Soon we shall be four sisters. And maybe the next sister is you. <laughs> so, you never know. The next sister might also be seated here. The other thing is that you have to be a practicing Catholic. I can see people are enjoying Yes, the next priest in the Father's order, in the Camelite order, might be you. Is it? Eh? Is it not possible? Yes, it might be you and you who are seated there. So, you have to be a practicing Catholic, you have to be committed to serve, and remember to follow Christ in whichever way, in the family life, in the, in the, in the consecrated life, you have to work hard in your studies. Why? Because the church also needs these beautiful grades. That grade A, that grade B, is also what the church needs. So you can imagine these priests who are here, the deacon who is here, the type of grade they get to be here. You can imagine this is a Virginia who is here, the type of grade she had to be here. Is it? What is the cut grade for becoming a nurse? Hmm? Hmm? Ah, yeah. Becoming a teacher? So, I welcome you. As we talk of being self-aware, you've been told about journey to holiness and decision-making, Please work hard in your studies. The grade is needed. I don't cheat you. Even if you are to get married, we are talking of career women, is it? And career men. I don't want to leave the boy child also aside. So please, I encourage you, my sisters and my brothers, work hard. The grade will also be asked when you go for the interview.